So yeah, once again, thanks, thanks for having us here. Um, so this is the joint work of the team noted on the slide uh, below left, and we are building an MVP, a minimum viable product prototype for the semantic annotation of 3D cultural artifacts. Next slide, please. So you might have heard about the German NFDIs that aim to build up research data infrastructures, each for certain disciplines and data types. And TIB is part of several of those projects. And here we talk about the NFDI for architecture, art history, musicology, and adjacent disciplines, which started one year ago and will be funded at least for five years and probably another five-year period. Next slide, please. And the MVP is part of the work carried out in task area one, data capture and enrichment, where I am co-spokesperson. And um, pardon, I, I forgot to introduce myself, but <laughs> somehow I'm from uh, TIB, German National Library of Sci Science and Technology, and, and the other uh, team uh, members on the first slide are as well. Um, so the uh, next slide, please. This is the project in a nutshell. We aim at connecting a Wikibase instance for linked open data management with the compact viewer for 3D image preview and annotation. And um, deploying a data upload pipeline via OpenRefine alongside this. So next slide. So from the start, we have been using real sample data in order to be able to troubleshoot the workflows of our tool chain every step of the way. And we are very lucky to have a secure partnership with um, the Corpus der Barocken Deckenmalerei, that is a Technical University of Munich affiliation, and to work with a very focused sample set of data that you see here. But it's still a very rich one. So uh, with this, it's the case, um, it's the Castle of Weikersheim case that you see here. Next slide, please. Um, so for this audience, I mean, I don't have to explain uh, the, the function of Wikibase so much, but using linked open data is a specifically Wikibase in this case allows us to overcome the issues of soiling data and data redundancy when the same data is replicated among multiple unconnected sources. And in this case, the data was spread uh, across several diff different systems. And we were able to connect it via a Wikibase instance, while also enriching that Wikibase instance with connections to external repositories like Wikidata and adding links to external resources like the GND and Icon class notation system. Eventually, the data in our test case can become part of the for culture knowledge graph that you, you might hear about later. To for um, next slide, please. So here for annotation, we are relying on the open source tool Compact because it can handle rich media, including 3D and 2D images as well as video. And it allows collaborative editing of annotation edit follows established data like uh, data standards like W3C web annotation standard. Next one. So here you see a very simplified graphic representing the overall architecture of our system. And we are using a model system of open source components, which follow three core user interaction workflows. So um, the first one for data cleaning and upload, then for metadata storage and indexing, and finally for media presentation and annotation. And yeah, I think now Lucia goes on with the next slide. Yes, so um, here you can see the first part of our um, architecture, the Wikibase instance. So this is a, a test Wikibase instance, which currently Wikimedia Germany is hosting for us um, via the WGP stack. And so next I'm going to present the data upload pipeline. So um, we have four steps, which I'm going to show you in the next slides. The first step that we had to do, obviously, was to collect the data from our data partners. And because this is an MVP, we only collected um, a sample data set. So it's not a lot of items, but they're very heterogeneous. So we have a lot of different classes, like um, people, 3D items, rooms, buildings, and so on. Um, 
And so from that, we had to develop a data model. Um, here on the slide, you can see the finished data model. Um, so if you if you follow the link um, on the data model, you can actually see it in our wiki base. Um, and we didn't start from zero, obviously. Our data partners already had a data model. So we reused that and just adapted it to fit into wiki base and basically to fit the linked data uh, modeling standards. And um, the data model can still change or it will change uh, certainly to yeah to adapt to new user requirements and needs um right um and so the third step so the next step that we had to do was um in the back end when, when we had to connect open refine um, which we're using for upload to our wiki base um and so we actually have um, a whole other presentation on just this part later today so um you can hear more about that if you're interested um, but basically, we have um, a service box that automates the deployment of OpenRefine for a custom wiki base. Mm. And then the final step is the upload. So um, in OpenRefine, we transform the data, clean it, enrich it, um, yeah, create a schema, and then, um, then we upload the data um, directly via OpenRefine. But we also have some... Uh, normal wiki pages that are not wiki based items and those we created via bot scripts. And so this is our data entry workflow th that shows the connection between wiki base and compact viewer. And um, well, this is already very high level and simplified, but I'm not going to um, talk you through all of it, um, just some parts. Um, and in the development of our data entry workflow, we are currently in phase one. Um, which means we are focusing on manual annotation and um, we want to get the bulk um, automated data upload working, um, but the annotation is still happening manually. And in the next phase, phase two, which is starting next year, we want to also fo focus on um, automatic annotation so that we can get some bulk annotation processes going. So this is what Compact looks like now. And so you can see that um, basically you can view a 3D item, you can interact with it, but the metadata is um, very minimal right now. There are no semantics in it, um, so it's very flat. And what we are planning on doing is to create um, or to change compact so that you can that you have semantics in the metadata as well as in the annotations. And um, so if you see here on the bottom right, um, Basically, you always see where you're at in the building. You see that you're in the Weikersheim Castle and which room you're in. And so we want to make it possible to navigate between those rooms and to create a connection between the 3D items. So here you can see a part of the ceiling and we want, want to make it possible that you can see the whole ceiling, navigate to other parts of the ceiling and navigate to different rooms. Um, yeah, and finally, so this whole development, it's happening um, transparently, openly in GitLab. So you can also follow the link here to our GitLab. And um, there you can also find the Open Refine service box, which is already ready for reuse. And you can also contribute if you want. So if you think this is um, a data workflow that would also be um, useful to you, then um, yeah, we welcome you to add your requirements um, into our GitLab so that, um, yeah, we can just know what to develop in the future. All right, thank you. This is the part from TA1. So now I'm going to end the screen share, hopefully. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Ina and Lucia, bang on time, 10 minutes. So OK. So thank you very much. So I'm going to continue this talk about NFDI for culture. And I will talk about the NFDI for culture knowledge graph and its connection to Wikibase. So first of all, NFDI for culture is only one out of almost or over all 30 NFDI consortia. And the main purpose of these projects, which is really a huge effort over the next 10 years, is uh, to enable uh, research data management based on the so-called FAIR principles. What are the FAIR principles? Probably some of you have already heard it, that this is about you know, making data findable, making it accessible, interoperable, 
and in the end reusable, which is of course a rather important task for research data to make it worthwhile so that, so that the wheel does not have to be reinvented each and every time. And several of these consortia will do this based on a knowledge graph. And this is also what we are going to do here in NFDI for culture. So what will be in this kind of knowledge graph, of course, all kind of data resources from the project, which are data, which are services, which are information about persons who are involved in institutions, expertises, and all the stuff. And what we want to do there is we want to create a hub to enable federated access to all of the resources of all of these you know, more than 70 partner institutions and even more because this should cover the entire domain. So the coverage, if you look at that, it's about not only architecture that Ina had mentioned, it's also about art history, it's about musicology, it's about performing arts and media studies. So culture here is a rather rich domain and in the end we want also to federate and to connect to the other 30 domains that we have here. So. We, are, we have chosen to use a knowledge graph for that, but for that, this knowledge graph has to incorporate formal semantics. So most of you probably don't have any idea what this really means, so I will go a bit deeper into that, what we are going to do with it and why we are going to need it in the end. So as I already have told you, this is a huge data integration effort. We have 70 plus partner institutions and what we want to do there is, of course, we want to keep the effort that we need for maintenance of this data integration effort as low as possible. And this, of course, we want to do then based on so-called ontologies, where the semantics is really in the ontologies available and not in the programs that are working with it. And in the end, of course, based on that, we want to enable semantic and exploratory search tools over federated research data resources. We want to enable intelligent recommendations about the data and of course, question answering and all the stuff that is really possible. So now, how does this formal semantics enable low or lower effort data integration? For that, we first have to take a sneak peek into semantics. So let this be some kind of research data that you encounter. Now, the question, of course, would be, what does it mean? Any idea? I mean, it could be a quantity, 42 things. It could be a point in time, the year 42 BC, for example. It could be a time span from 42 microseconds up to 42 millennia. It could be a length, 42 micrometers up to 42 parsec. It could be a weight, a measurement. It could be a code like an ASCII code. ASCII code 42 is the asterisk, for example. It could be a character string, as you see here. So what it, what does it really mean is really no idea if you don't have more context, more information about that. And even if you know, if it's a quantity, what does the quantity mean? Is it, for example, the 42 illustrations that uh, Lewis Carroll has put into Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> is it, of course, the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything? Is it the atomic weight or the atomic number of, of molybdenum? Or is it object number 42 in the, in the Charles Messier catalog of, of nebulae? So which is also referred to as the Orion Nebula. No idea. To make this clear, we of course have to put context and semantics into the data. And it has to be into the data, not, not in the software. So software, there is semantics in the traditional context. What does this mean? So usually what the software does, if it encounters data, the programmer that is writing the software, the program code, he tries to understand what the data means. And according to that, he or she is creating and designing the software. So the understanding and interpretation of the data depends on the understanding of the individual programmer who really did the software then. And this means in the end, if anything in the data is changing, this usually conflicts and, and creates extensive software maintenance effort that is necessary in the end. And it's of course error prone because it's the understanding of the programmer, not of the data originator. On the other, other hand, so for more than two uh, decades now, there is, um, the in initiative of, of the semantic web where people try to put more semantics, so meaning into the data in the web. And uh, this means then the semantics really is in the data. It's written by the data provider and it's depending on the original understanding of the one who provides the data. So this is then really clear. The point is you have to encode that formally, which means it has to be an ontology, a formal ontology based on some kind of mathematical logic so that it's interpretable and understandable by a machine, by the computer. If you do it that way, 
then this automatically results in less software maintenance because the software can stay the same because if the data is changing, it also changes its meaning and the software is able to detect it and react accordingly. It's less error prone because, you know, yeah, the understanding of the data only relies on the data originator and this in the end uh, enables simpler data integration and simpler data reuse. However, why then are we using Wikibase or trying to use Wikibase for that effort in NFDI for culture? Simply for the, let's say, singular reason that Wikibase is offering us a, a graphical user interface for interactive collaborative editing on scale of this structured data we are, we are, we are dealing with. It's a convenient way to, to enable and engage all the communities. And of course, it connects to a semantic data store in the end. However, it's a wiki. It's not a semantic thing. You all know this kind of architecture here in Wikibase. We have here on the one side the wiki system with all its components, and there is an add-on RDF store. This is the Blaze graph here. And the question is how much semantics is really now available in this RDF store, which is, of course, capable of carrying lots of semantics. The point is Wikibase, you know this from the history, has been created as a store for structured data, not for semantic data. And the RDF triple store has been added later on. It's only an add-on. So the data is, in principle, only relational data. So it's in the MariaDB, which is a MySQL thing. And the attached triple store only contains so-called flat triples without explicit semantics because you are not using any other of these W3C semantic web vocabularies. There is no RDF type, RDF S subclass or OWL class or stuff like that. It's all based on Wiki vocabulary. You are not using the W3C semantic web uh, vocabulary, which means you don't have a formal interpretation and there is no model theoretic interpretation for that. So the machine has no idea what the stuff means for that. You need a programmer who writes the program and interprets the stuff. But this is only one of the problems. So it's like here, Hercules um, struggling uh, the, the Hydra, which means if you cut off one of the heads, three new will pop up immediately. So one of the problems is we don't have formal semantics so far because the triple store, uh, store there is already only an add-on and there is no transparent syn synchronous and bi-directional interaction and uh, communication between the wiki system and the blaze graph. All data changes that you do have to be committed via the wiki interface, via the wiki API, or via tools that are exactly using that. So there are efforts now making this a bit easier. However, it's not a transparent, synchronous, bi-directional communication between these two things, which would be necessary to be a full-fledged, also semantic data store on both ends. So what we are doing, or we are trying to do here in NFDI for Culture, is we are trying to evaluate right now some viable workarounds and solutions to enable Wikibase to become really a semantic data store. And this is like a Sisyphus task, as you see here. So we are trying to do this via so-called declarative semantic mapping. So I will show you how this looks like. And of course, for that, we have then to import and export additional data, and we have to create a semantic extension to make this all happening. In the end, we will give out, of course, then for all of the 70 partner institutions, their guidelines and best practices, how to connect them exactly with their Wikibase resource to our large knowledge graph. Okay, one of the variants we are suggesting here is simply that we um, extend what is in the Blaze graph here. So we are, can simply you know, add data uh, about these W3C vocabularies, so we want to map what is a P31. So this is a property P and P31 is equivalent to RDF type. So this is then based on W3C vocabularies, the meaning provided in terms of RDF triples, which can be put into the Blaze graph. This would only have to be done once for all of the stuff that is referring or mapping to W3C vocabularies. More important is the other thing, everything I define in my wiki base, so every entity I define, every property I define also, I have to give it a kind of semantic grounding. So this will be additional triples I have to add there. So for example, I can say that Q42 is the same as some, let's say, uh, DBpedia Douglas Adams entity, or Q43 would be the same as Turkey. Q5 would be a class which is equivalent to DBO person, which is also from the DBpedia ontology here, for example. And this, of course, would have to be synchronized with every new entry or fact that comes here with the wiki system. However, 
as soon as these triples are there, we can use a reasoner, which is a program that is able to do logical inference and deductions on the formal semantics that is in the, uh, the blaze graph. And with that, we could materialize all the missing semantic to triples out of that. So if you have something which is transitive, then you could uh, materialize each single instance of, let's say, a transitive property and stuff like that. And by that, you can make implicit knowledge completely explicit. And you could also detect potential inconsistencies. However, the way we are suggesting to do this here is also only a one-way synchronization with Wikibase. So the way back is still missing, but um, don't worry, this project will be five years plus phase two, another five years. And there are 29 other NFDI projects out there with whom we cooperate to make this somehow happening. A second variant would be simply don't touch the existing Wikibase system. Use another and additional triple store that can be any kind of triple store. It could also be a blaze graph. We have chosen here a virtuoso and a reasoner and synchronize with an external triple store. But in principle, to do anything else in exactly the same way. So this is currently what we are working on and how we are trying to bring more semantics into Wikibase. However, the research community, as we represented here, has many more requirements. For example, they want to have more flexible wiki templates, so not always the same kind of page that you see here, that you can do data aggregations and stuff like that on the pages would be nice. It would also be nice to remove existing bottlenecks, especially with mass data upload, for example. Also, the community wants to use all kinds of existing vocabularies and ontologies to put them in there and not simply to replicate them without the semantics that belongs to them. And also, they want to use their own and existing URIs and not only P and Qs that are belonging to exactly this wiki base here. And of course, a full transparent communication between the wiki system and the triple graph store would be a nice thing, as well as other communities also here in the NFDI domain. They want to have a fully fledged access control on the entity and fact that the who is allowed to see what in which you know circumstance and stuff like that. And of course, in a perfect world, this could also serve as, let's say, uh, a collaborative tool to edit and design the underlying ontologies. If you want to learn more about ontologies and all the semantic stuff, um, please feel free to, to visit our lectures that are freely available on OpenHPI or on our YouTube channel. Tabea will post the, uh, the link into the Etherpad. So these are small lectures where all of the semantic stuff is, is further explained. Okay, that's all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks so much, Harold. And I think we are kind of running up uh, to our time limit here. I think there were uh, a lot of interesting discussions going on in the chat, which uh, I'm sure um, our tech team will paste back into the Etherpad. I don't know if uh, we have time for maybe just like one main question. Um, there's been a lot of discussion going on around, yeah, how do we uh, yeah, move the RDF in and out, right? So there's like this two-way connection. Um, I just don't know what we can pick. Maybe this uh, very first question from Barbara, which uh, was more about kind of generally how the uh, graph will be connected to other NFDI bodies. And I wonder, Barbara, do you want to just jump on the call and, and uh, share your question with us? Oh, she, if, uh, she might not be there anymore, though. So it's, yeah, will the NFDI for culture knowledge graph reach out to other consortia of the NFDI ecosystem? I think the answer is yes, right, Carl? That's the idea. Yes, absolutely. That's the idea. So for everybody who wants to also uh, set up a Wikibase instance or a public available Sparkle endpoint or whatever, we want to enable federated search over this entire construct, over all of the 30, uh, if possible, NFDI projects to, to have a unified access to all existing research data in Germany. Great, and I like this uh, one of the final comments from Jens Olich. Uh, I think a baked-in concept of same as properties in Wikibase would go a long way for, uh, for mapping semantic vocabularies. Yes, I think everyone in the Wikibase community has been begging for same as for such a long time. Um, let's see what we can make. I think I'm going to have to end this session, unfortunately, because we do need to switch to the next one. And there's a very long wait, <laughs> a very long list of speakers for the next one. So for tech reasons, I will um, finish the session now and we'll 
uh, paste everything from the chat into the etherpad and hopefully people can continue the discussions there. Thank you so much for all of our speakers today. Um, and we'll be switching over to the next session in about a minute. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.